So if you're wondering why God is real, Jesus is real, Christianity is the right religion, and the King James Bible, the Bible is the true word of God, I'm going to go through uh, scientific, mathematical, historical, and philosophical, logical perspectives. When you look at these perspectives, you're going to realize that Christianity and the Bible is the only right thing. So I'm going to look at Hebrews chapter 11. We'll start at verse 1. Verse 1. Now faith, okay, the Christian faith we have today, is it empty? No. Is the substance. See, substance shows that it's not empty. It has something. Of things hoped for, the evidence. See that? It has evidence of things not seen. So Christianity contains much evidence. And we see this philosophically, scientifically, mathematically, historically, etc. Okay, so let's cover all this. So we're going to cover the science part. So since we're going to cover the science part, maybe I'll do blue on this one. So in scientifically speaking right here, why is the Bible true? What is science? You, 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 you take an experiment and you actually do empirical evidence. You do first-hand experiment. Oh, by the way, I took research studies on this one, okay, at a graduate level. They say that 90% of the scientists, it's all biased. When they, when they actually do empirical evidence, they think that the empirical evidence they're doing is wrong because their preconceived belief of what they were taught in school or what they believed in cannot be wrong. So the actual experiment they must have done must have been wrong. So then they're going to do it over again. That's something to keep in mind. See, so a lot of the scientists who give you their research, it's not as empirical evidence as you think. Okay, now remember this. Science is something that you can empirically test for yourself. That you see. Okay. So why isn't evolution true? Because it's not something that you see. It's not empirical evidence. No, I've seen something gradually evolve. Yeah, that's right. You can see something that gradually evolves or changes or transitions. But you don't see something where it's going to evolve beyond its scope and level where it can transform into a totally different kind of creature, totally different kind of organism. That's not how it works. In empirical evidence, think about this. The only way that they can transform it into a totally different organism is not by naturally leaving it as it is. It's by what? Whether you like it or not, it has to take intelligence. That's why you have to have intelligent scientists in those labs who what? Design and put all those things in place. Thus, you don't like to say this, but what is this then? Intelligent design. That's the only way that you can get it to evolve or change into a totally different organism. That's how you're going to do it. But that's the thing about science, is that that's empirical evidence. Isn't that empirical evidence? It is empirical evidence, even among scientists, to prove evolution, that you're going to have to have intelligent people designing the things and putting things into place. It doesn't change that fact, no matter what. For a thing to be left by itself, you got to think about this, for a thing to be left by itself is totally impossible. To change into an evolved species like us today, with intelligent mindset, complicated uh, human being, organism we are, we're a complicated human organism. How can you do that? Through natural design. Through just naturally leaving it alone, it violates the second law of thermodynamics. That is a law that cannot be denied. Even Einstein himself said the two, one of the two strongest laws in science. This is one of them, second law of thermodynamics. What is that? That's the law of entropy. What does that teach? Everything falls apart. It doesn't evolve. This is the total opposite of evolution. What are the chances if you leave an organism by itself and then have it evolve into us today? The odds are beyond scope. It's like trillions and trillions. There are scientists, Harvard PhDs, Ivy League scholars who took, who took the odds and did the mathematical statistics on it, and it's beyond impossible, okay? It's beyond winning the lottery. You are lucky for winning the lottery 10 times before you can even hit evolution right here. So see, this is scientifically impossible right here. 
But it's possible we did it. Yeah, we did it. We intelligent beings did it. Design. You put them in place. That's why. But if you left it all by itself to, the, to nature itself, it's, entropy will be in play. And it's, trust me, billions of years, you add more time, you make it worse. You don't make evolution better, you make it worse when you add billions of years. They think when you add billions of years, it makes things better. No, you make it worse. Add more time with your car running by itself, it's going to make it better? Add billions of years, it's going to make it really better, right? It's going to turn to a Ferrari if you give it billions of years one day. So science demands that there has to be intelligent design. Because that is empirical evidence that we see every day, even. Okay, let's talk about historical. History as well. History demands Christianity to be true. There is no other religion, think about any other religion, that has historical evidence compared to the Bible, compared to Christianity. Not one. Okay, let me give an example right here with history, okay? We believe in the account of Alexander the Great. Now you might say, why is that, Pastor? Because we base it off of certain people's writings here. But the writings of these certain people, you got to understand, was more than 400 years apart. Not only that, the amount of evidences is only a handful of manuscripts. Now think about this. What about the Bible with Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, whether you like it or not, manuscript evidence demands you cannot go more than a hundred years, actually. Atheist and Bart Ehrman, they, they go with, they, they try to go hyper skepticism to try to disprove the evidence of Jesus within the short range here. Well, you know, a hundred years is, and even two hundred years is a long time, a lot of things can happen. Yeah, so is Alexander the Great. A lot of things can happen. Maybe he's a fake. Maybe it's not Alexander the Great. Maybe, maybe it's not a he. It's a she. You ever thought about that? But see, that's not historian. That's not how you, that's not how you prove historical evidence. Historical, historians don't do that. Historians, what they do is that when they look up history and they dig up archaeology that confirms the history and the manuscript evidences, if you go within this range, that's very strong. That's extremely strong. You might point out deficiencies with this, but trust me, you will find more deficiencies with any other historical figure, any other historical book than this one. By the way, do you know how many manu... Okay, look at the manuscript evidence. Do you know how many manuscript evidence we have for just the New Testament? Only New Testament? New Testament is 27 books. We have 66 books in our Bible. You got 5,000 Greek, and I'm not talking about different languages, only Greek manuscripts. By the way, do you know how much percentage they agree? Within the thousands of years range? Over 90% in agreement. It go as high as 99, and I'm not lying. It goes as high as 98 to 99. What other historical evidence is beyond this? Oh, I don't believe you, Pastor. Oh, I don't believe you, Pastor. Well, look at Israel. Did you study the history of Israel? Study the history of Israel. Israel is your common sense, modern day evidence that Christianity has to be true, that the Bible is true. How do they retain their language, their culture? All other cultures during the times of Israel, gone. Bleak. Not only that, did you see how many times they lost their nation? How they were slaughtered mercilessly? They should have been extinct a long time ago. The nation that they have today, during their war with Palestinians and other nations, they should have lost, actually. How did they win? Look at history. See, history demands it. I could go on and on with historical evidences, but I'm going to stop right here. So let's cover math. Let's cover math. Math is incredibly amazing for your Bible. You might say, how so, Pastor? Well, take, for example, several people. We're going to cover right here the prophecies of Jesus. 
Now, if I were to tell you that you, so-and-so, would be born at a certain city and, th and this specific incident would happen to you, you would suffer the, an unusual and a strange death with a nail gun to the head, and that also that you will be buried by a rich man, even though you are born as a poor person. And then I listed like 10 other uh, strange and miraculous incidents within that one lifetime of yours. 10, 20, let's say 30, okay? Let's say 20 to 30, okay? And I gave those odds. What are the odds of those things happening? Like, that ain't going to happen. But think about this. When you got Jesus Christ, they mentioned, do you know how many prophecies there are about Jesus Christ? There are so many prophecies about Jesus Christ. There are over 200. Now, you take only 37 of them. Peter Stoner, chairman of mathematics and astronomy, he took the calculations right here. And I'm surprised I still remember this. One out of 10 to the what? 147th power. Oh, by the way, those odds are even smaller than evolution even happening. That shows how impossible evolution is when you naturally leave it by yourself. And this one is 147 zeros after that. That's so many trillions after that. How about that? This is just, this is just 19 prophecies. 19. Chairman of Mathematics and Astronomy. Okay, let me go on. There's a, there's a Harvard scholar, Ivan Painin. He's an atheist, okay? He was an atheist. Ivan Painin, he, the, the, uh, he took the Hebrew Bible, and then he switched the letters with the numbers, because I don't know if you know this, but sometimes languages, they represent sometimes numbers. Yeah. So what Ivan Painin did is that he switched the Hebrew letters into numbers, and then he saw, undoubtedly, there was a pattern made. He saw that there was a pattern made as a professional mathematician, Harvard. And when he saw this pattern, he realized that the odds of it happening are more than, uh, I'm trying to go by memory here, 13 trillion of, a certain, of the account of Genesis happening at that pattern when he switched it. This made Ivan Painin convert to salvation from an unbeliever to a believer. That was Ivan Payne. So the mathematical statistics of your Bible to occur is just beyond impossible. By the way, if we were to add these statistics with the Greek manuscripts, with mathematical odds, name me, other, name me any other science textbook, history textbooks, without computers, that has this much agreement, statistically speaking, in math. That's a miracle. So you see right here, there is no other science textbooks with all their advanced computers. You ever notice how they have the seventh edition, the third edition, the fifth edition, and all that? This book with 5,000 Greek manuscripts and all that retained itself. If it had an edition, it was only because of typographical errors, printing uh, typographical errors and spelling changes. That's why. Because 1611 KJV English, if you read it, is totally different writing. That's all it was. <laughs> you notice that, right? Totally different writing. Yeah, sometimes I can't even read that. I had to go through like uh, old English class back at Beowulf to understand that kind of reading letters. It was really hard. So you see right here that the mathematical statistics is just plain, if you're honest, impossible. If you apply that to any situation in life. But let's add the mathematical statistics here. The Weather Channel, how accurate are they? 100%? Obviously not. But if the Weather Channel told you that a hurricane was coming, so you should evacuate, and let's say 75% chance it's happening, you're going to stay or you're going to evacuate? You're going to evacuate. You don't care if it's 75%. Now let me ask you this. With this much percentage of the Bible, what, 13 trillion, 10 out of the 147th power, okay, that's beyond 100%, 200%. And it says there's a hell coming. Yeah. You're not going to evacuate? You have that much faith in weather channel than, a, than this much amount of evidence. There is faith somewhere. Thus we close it off with philosophical. So I spent a long time, so let me just close it off right here, philosophically. 
Uh, I can go to all other branches, but I'm just going to close it off with philosophical right here. So when, when we take logic right here, we break it down with logic with how we were created. And we break it down with logic with comparing all the other evidences and face out there. Which one has more evidence? See, no other religion has had this many evidences and no other religion was heavily critiqued and yet stood out. To uh, better support the evidence is when you, have, when you know there was a lot of critiques in it yeah. and it stood against the critiques. Philosophically speaking, if we were to go to the origins of how we were created, is that it was naturally, uh, it naturally came to be, or it purely came out of nothing, or it was by intelligent design. Now, when you look at everyday life that we go through, common sense everyday life, everyday life, when we see a complicated creation, a complicated design, do we take that as something that can naturally came to be? Or nothing created it? Or will the first thing people think about is an intelligent person did it? If you see a painting, for example, a beautiful painting in the middle of the woods, and you don't see the artist anywhere, you, found, you try to find the artist, you can't find him anywhere, you're not going to believe that it just naturally came to be. You're not going to say that it came out of nothing. Even though you never saw the artist, you know the artist had to have been there and created it. If you saw a pattern uh, on the beach, and then you saw these little wavelengths, then yeah, maybe when you see these little wavelengths, you can say it naturally happened, just like evolution. Well, you see these little th patterns that happen, it naturally happened. True, we can believe that. But if you take something so complicated and intricate, like, uh, uh, like you say, Brandy loves Mel, okay? Brandy heart symbol Mel at the beach. You're not going to say it naturally happened through the taking across the sands of the beach. Even though you never saw the person writing it, Oh, the person wrote it. See, so the, philosophically speaking, that makes the most sense as well. Philosophically speaking. So uh, when we look at philosophically speaking, the, everyone has faith, including an atheist. <laughs> what, whatever the Weather Channel says. Even though you don't see it. There are some things you don't see, yet you believe there was someone intelligent that created it. So when you compare all other religions, and when you compare with atheism, Christianity and the Bible always stands out. That's why we know that our evidence is true.